Hi there, I'm Thierry, co-founder and head of DevRel at OctML. And in this video, I wanted to talk about image to image. So this is a, another facet of image generation where instead of just providing a text prompt, you're also providing a reference image. And that's gonna allow you to achieve really cool image transformation tools or workflows. So back in June, I wrote this Cartoonizer app that was powered by Octo AI when we were launching the Octo AI compute service. And I'll just show you quickly how it works. You just upload any photo you want, usually a real world photo, and it would generate a cartoon or CGI version of that input photo. And so image to image works in this way. You provide an input image, it is used as a reference, and that seeds your denoising process. And as a result, Stable Diffusion will produce an image that looks fairly close to what you had originally. Um, there's other components to this process, but let's take a look at how Stable Diffusion here is used. So it is this image to image pipeline, and on top of this, you're applying a customization, which is in the form of a LoRa or a checkpoint. Back then, when I had to write this app, I had to write my own model container that I then launched on an Octoi endpoint. And that requires quite a bit of experience. Today, it's much easier to approach this um, app writing uh, challenge because we actually have really easy to use image generation APIs. And so today we're actually gonna prototype this Cartoonizer app from the comfort of our web browser using our image generation solution, Demo UI. So if you go on octoi.cloud, you can go to image generation image tools and hit the demo for image to image. Once you're here, you'll notice that this looks a lot like the text to image UI, but you have this extra box that allows you to provide an image image um, as essentially your reference image that you're gonna use to generate a new image. So all you have to do here is drag and drop a photo. So I'm gonna take this photo of a dog. Actually, this is what the photo looks like. A dog standing on this uh, wet street in a city and in order to generate an image successfully out of that input image i also need to describe what i'd like to get in my output image so i'll have to basically describe manually what i see in the scene so a photo of a white dog standing in a wet street in a city and let's start at a really low strength to understand how image to image works uh, I'm just gonna change my dimensions here to use a landscape orientation. And I'm gonna bump to the number of uh, images to four in order to get you know, several samples to look at. So at a very low strength, when you're using image to image, that means that you're essentially getting an output image that looks very close to your input image, to your reference image. So these are very close to our real world image. If you bump it to say 0.9, so we're going to another extreme and we're gonna generate a new image here. This is using vanilla Stable Diffusion XL. Now you're gonna get something that's a bit more imaginative or creative. Um, here we're getting you know, different perspectives, different breeds of dogs and different cities altogether. We still have the same similar color palette uh, similar environment, but you can see that this is a bit more of a departure from a reference image. So this is really a slider you can play with. I would say values that are a little bit closer to 0 0.5 are probably better based on what kind of image manipulation application you're trying to write. But where the fun really starts is when you apply customizations, right, to your SDXL model. So I've already preloaded certain LORAs and checkpoints. You can go online to your favorite um, library of checkpoints and LORAs. Here I have this uh, cartoon one that generates very cartoony images. And I'm gonna stay at 0 0.9, which is where we were just a second ago, and I'm gonna generate a new set of images. And now we should get some more cartoony images as a result of this fairly high uh, image to image uh, denoising strength parameter. And sure enough, we're getting <laughs> cartoon-like uh, photos of that dog uh, standing on that wet street. So these dogs obviously don't look very much like that uh, original uh, dog in the photo, but we can play with the slider here. So we can reduce it to maybe 0 0.65. That's gonna bring us a little bit closer to the original photo. And this should give us a pretty cool effect for our Cartoonizer app. So once we get a convincing result, okay, so this looks a bit more like that dog. It's a bit more uh, cartoon-like. 
or de definitely getting a, a, a widespread of uh, a dog breeds. Um, but you know, we can also be a bit more specific in our prompt here to, to get a better result at the end. But I would say that this one is actually a fun rendition of our original photo. And you could argue that this is good enough to start a quality um, photography transformation filter. Uh, there's really a lot of effects that you can achieve here using image to image. So if you wanna take that and productionize it into an app, all you have to do is look at the usage examples and you'll see that in this Python or TypeScript usage example, in the payload to our image generation endpoint, we are specifying what LoRa we're using with the strength we're passing in, as well as you know we're passing this initial image in this base 64 encoded form. So this is enough to tell that endpoint, hey, I'm not just doing text to image, I'm doing image to image, take that image to seed the denoising process. So I hope this inspires you to build your own cartoonizer-like pipelines and demos. Um, there's a lot of creative opportunities, especially when you combine it with the customization that these asset, this asset orchestration library enables. So this is where really creative opportunities uh, are plentiful. So I invite you to try this out. This concludes this video on image to image, which shows you a building block to build apps like the Cartoonizer. In this next video, we're gonna look at how we can bypass the need to actually label these images by hand by using models like Clip Interrogator. And now we're getting in the realm of uh, multimodal model chains, and this is where things start to get really fun. So stay tuned for the next episode.